biggest news that we need to talk about right now was this, I don't want to call it secret visits, Jake, but under the radar visits by three, four of the top six players in the nation came to Athens Saturday. You know, you're talking about the number one player in the nation and Corey Foreman, uh, the number two player in the nation and Amarius Mims, uh, the number one pro style quarterback in the nation and Brock Vandegrift, as well as uh, the number one defensive tackle in the nation and Mason Smith. Uh, you also had Terry on Arnold, who's uh, rivals 250 cornerback, uh, safety type. Uh, you also had Lavoisier Carroll, Georgia running back commit and Xavier Sori also made that trip, and that was a big one for him. Uh, he's a guy I know that Georgia really likes and, and has been on. So um, just just a star-studded weekend. We've said this on our show from day one, that uh, a lot of these kids are making decisions without making the, you know, getting to go to the campuses. How advantageous has Brock Vandegrift been over the course of all of this? Uh, his ability to serve as tour guide, show him around town. Uh, you know, he's a guy who kind of knows the city in and out and uh, knows what these coaches uh, want to get get across to these top players. You know, I'm excited about the fact that they did come here together because there's a lot of bit in my recruiting expertise over the years. There's a lot to be said about one guy feeling real good about a place like Mims does, and he's talking about what he knows, and he's telling the same thing that Brock's saying, who's already committed. So these guys are hitting it from all sides here. If I were Kirby Smart and I were laying out the welcome committee for a guy like Corey Foreman, I'm getting Kendall Milton, I'm getting JT, that's your West Coast perspective. I'm getting Malik Herring, because he's primed for a big year. And then I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna get Jordan Davis, and I'm gonna say, hey, uh, you know, this is the guy who's who's going to be the, the disruptor. Maybe you get a guy like Trayvon Walker and say, hey, this is a role you can fill uh, when you get here. Georgia picked up the, uh, DeJon Warren, as we mentioned. Uh, I thought it was quite interesting, as Jake pointed out. Never been to Athens. I've been his friend, but he's never been to Athens. So, you know, I would not go up there sight unseen, but apparently he wants to be part of this. I think his connection with Charles Warren. The, uh, we had the great story from Jason Butts, and uh, Jake, you've spoken to him multiple times. I want to go to Jake, then back to Coach Dunn, and if you would, both give me what you see in Dijon Warren. I think that in this kid, you've got as close to a mirror image of another player as you're going to get, and that's Eric Stokes. I mean, you know, you've got a, he's a dead ringer size-wise. 6'1", 185. That's what Georgia lists Eric Stokes as. That's what Dejan Warren lists as on uh, his huddle. Uh, you're talking about a guy with sub 4'4 speed. It's obvious that Eric Stokes has that as well. We, you got to always look to the future and realistically, as strong as our secondary is going to be this year, we could have some major uh, situations happen we know we're going to lose Daniels and Stokes but we could also lose uh you know there's there's people out there that are talking about uh Campbell being rated in the top three uh, in the country as far as pro prospects as far as corners so you know more than likely he'd be coming out too so that that's three holes pretty quickly even though we got some guys coming up you know Kimber and Ringo and guys like that George is going to need bodies in that secondary, and George is going to need bodies that have played some college football because you don't want to wake up into the first game of 2021 and you have to rely on Kimber and Ringo straight up. Now, maybe they can handle it. That's fine. But you don't want to put them in a position where they have to. The only thing that I've heard in the offensive line is Owen Condon has made a real move there at right tackle. Uh, and we knew that he had the ability, but he had a hurt shoulder in the spring, and uh, he, he's rehabbed it and he's taking advantage of the situation that he has a year on McClendon and, uh, and Truss and uh, the fact that the other two young guys, Tate Radledge and Broderick Jones are young guys. So uh, from what I understand that he's really taking advantage of his experience and work habits. We have, do have one question in the YouTube chat uh, and it's about freshman wide receivers and uh, what we've heard about them in practice so far. Yeah, I think the one guy that everybody's talking about uh, is Bur Jermaine Burton, just really explosive guy that uh, has, you know, a lot of experience playing at a high level there in California and being trained over there by Terrence Edwards. Uh, really is ready to go. I, I, and uh, certainly, we, you know, Rosemary Scott and Harry and Smith hadn't been out there. <laughs> What's on the wall behind you, Jerry? Uh, that is a gator skin. I actually, uh, I killed that gator uh, 10 years ago. 
Okay. I mean, there's so many Georgia-related <laughs> puns that people can throw this. 